Then you're just going to take your yarn marker and move it up for five rounds of just one single crochet into every stitch. So go ahead and complete five rounds of just one single crochet into every stitch around. This is how your work should look. And I finished five rows of one single crochet into every stitch. Then you can start stuffing it at any time, but I'm going to do my first decrease round and then I'm going to stuff mine. Take your yarn marker and just move it up to where you left off. And then for your first decrease round, you're going to make one single crochet into the next three stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for a decrease. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then you can go ahead and stuff the foot, and you can keep stuffing it as you, um, as you work to close the leg. And now for your next decrease round, just take your yarn marker and move it up. And then yes, this time you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. And then for your next decrease round, you're just going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then your decrease stitch and repeat that all the way around. Now you can go ahead and take your yarn marker out and you're just going to make decreases until it's almost closed. And then I'm going to show you how to slip stitch it closed. So go ahead and make decreases all the way around until it's almost closed and then come back and I'll show you how to slip stitch it closed. So this is how your paw should be looking and I'm almost closed. You can keep stuffing it if you need to. I'm happy with the amount of stuffing that I have in mind. So now I'm going to slip stitch it closed. I'm just going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, and then I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way around. Skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, and then bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And then you're going to keep doing that until it's completely closed. I'm going to do one more. And then I'm going to finish off. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the last loop. Bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're just going to take your yarn, your um, tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end, then go right where you tied your knot, and then come out anywhere on the paw, and then just cut the loose yarn end. And 
you're going to need four of these. The rest of them I made white, but you can have fun with the colors. Let me get the last one. Here we go. So I have four feet. Go ahead and finish your four paws, making them whatever color that you want for your dog, and then come back. After you have your feet, go ahead and get two of them. And there's two ways that you can put your feet onto your dog. And one of them is a little bit harder to do, but it's the way that I like to do it. And then the other way, I'm going to show you first, just take the colored yarn that you want to use to sew on the feet or the legs and put that onto your tapestry needle. And you can just sew it. You can line up where you want to have your feet. Make sure that your paw is facing forward. And then you can just sew it on here by going in and out and sewing it to the body. That's one way that you can do it. The other way is the way that I like to do it, and that is to line up the legs where I want them. And that is where you take your tapestry needle and you go through all the way through to the other side. and then you just pull through and pull it as snug as you want to the body and then you just go about a stitch over and go back through to the other side and I do this twice and then I tie a knot and then you just come out close to where you went in You have to feel for the tapestry needle and careful not to poke yourself. And then you just pull the tapestry needle through. And then you pull as snug as you want to the body. And then tie a knot. So you're going to go ahead and do that twice and then come back. Then you take your loose yarn ends with your tapestry needle. You just go right in where you tied your knot and then come out anywhere on the leg and then just cut the loose yarn end. And then I'm just going to go through with the white yarn too to make it extra secure. And so now I'm taking my white yarn and I'm going right through the same stitch that I did with the brown yarn. And then I'm going to come through with my tapestry needle on the other side. And then I'm just going to pull it snug, as snug as I want, and then tie a knot the same way. And like I said, if this is too hard, this method, then you can just take your tapestry needle and just go in and out of the body and the arm and just sew it on that way. So whichever way that you prefer to do it. And then your leg will go up and down. But if you prefer to sew it in place from the side and through the body, you should be able to make it move that way too. But that's the way that I do it to get the leg to go up and down. So this one actually has four, two of the brown yarn and then two of the white holding on the arm. And then I'm, you would do the same thing for the back legs. So now I just want to show you the two dogs. So after you get their legs sewn on, you can see how mine are standing. It depends on how many times you went through with your yarn. And I would recommend the white yarn to do that because it's really sturdy. And just go a couple of times. And the tighter you pull it, the more sturdy the legs will be. And then they can sit down too. 
I'm going to make both of them sit down. So now I have them both sitting and you can see the different expressions on their face. Also the different eyes. So you can have fun designing your own unique bulldog. And then also I'm going to show you how to put the paws on your dog if that's what you want. Now if you like the wrinkle above the nose, all you do is just take your white yarn or whatever color you want to make the wrinkle with and fold it over to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, put it right through the loop, hold the base with your middle finger and your thumb, and you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain the length that you want the wrinkle to be. So, so far I have a chain of three. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for chain four. Go ahead and make the chain as long as you want your wrinkle to be. If you want yours the same size as mine, come back and then I'll show you how long I made mine. Mine is a chain of 26. Then you're just going to take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, and then bring up a loop. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're just going to make one single crochet all the way back across and then come back. Then after you've made a single crochet into every stitch back across, go ahead and chain one. And then you're going to turn your work and you're not going to work a stitch into the base of that first chain one that you made. You're going to go into the next stitch over and you're just going to make a single crochet into every stitch back across until you've finished a total of six rows of one single crochet into every stitch and then come back. After you finish six rows of one single crochet into every stitch, then you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the piece together. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and put it on the end that you left for sewing. Fold the piece together and then you're just going to take your tapestry needle and just sew the ends together. So just the top stitch sewing the two ends together. And then come back. Then you just take the piece and then place it where you want over the nose and then just sew it in place with your tapestry needle. So you can see the different looks that you can create for your dog and I even created a little jowl on this side by pulling the yarn and then you can just go in and out with your same colored yarn and just create a little jowl or a little loose skin for the jaw and then just bury your loose yarn ends and finish sewing on your wrinkle. Another method you could use instead of using your tapestry needle to sew the edges of the ears together is you can take your crochet hook, make sure you put the two sides together. This is the colors that I chose for one of my dogs. And then once you have the sides lined up and the loose yarn ends on the inside, take your tapestry needle and go on one of the edges and just grab the stitch for the front part of the ear and the back part of the ear. Then take your yarn and go ahead and hook and bring it through. And then chain one. And tie a knot.
and I'm going to go ahead and go behind my loose yarn end to bury it or you can just kind of tuck it on the inside and you're just going to evenly space your single crochet across the edge of the ear sewing the two edges or crocheting the two edges together with the single crochet so you just make one single crochet evenly spaced because remember the stitches you can't really you're working along the side so you don't have the stitches that are easy to work into so you just have to space them evenly across the side of the ear I'll do one more with you so go ahead and make a single crochet evenly spaced across the edge and then you're going to make two actually go ahead and come back towards the, when you get to the top and I'll show you how to turn the corner and get to the other side this is how my work looks along the side of my ear and now I'm at the tip of the ear so I'm just going to work that with you you may have to put a couple stitches into one a couple single crochet stitches into one stitch as you're turning the corner and it looks like two stitches I'm putting two single crochet into the same stitch and then you can see how it makes a nice curve along the top of the ear then you're just going to make one single crochet evenly spaced along the other side the same way you did on the opposite side and this is how one of my ears looks when I'm done I have finished going working down the other side so I'm going to go ahead and finish off just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the ear onto the dog and for this ear, I'm going to want to sew the back with the white colored yarn. And then on the front, I'm going to use the golden or honey colored yarn to sew the bottom. So you keep the same color as you sew it onto the When you're dog. making the larger paw, you're going to work it the same way for the paw portion. And then you're going to make your 15 rows of one single crochet into every stitch. And then you're also going to make the same increase round where you make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the third stitch. Then after you get to that point, you're going to change how you make the paw. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up. And you're only going to make one round of one single crochet into every stitch around and then come back. Then when you get back to your yarn marker go ahead and move it up to where you left off and you're going to make another increase round. You're going to make one single crochet into two stitches just like you did before and then two single crochet into the third stitch and then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Then go ahead and take your yarn marker and move it up and you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for 10 rounds and then come back. After you finish your 10 rounds of one single crochet into every stitch then you can go ahead and stuff your leg with pillow stuffing or whatever stuffing that you have for your project. Then take your yarn marker and move it up for your decrease round and for your decrease round you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch and then you're going to make your decrease stitch. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a decrease stitch. 
I'm going to do one more set with you. One single crochet into the first stitch. And then you're going to make your decrease stitch. And you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. Now I'm back to my yarn marker and I finished with the decrease stitch. I'm just going to move up the yarn marker and then you're just going to repeat the same decrease round where you make one single crochet into the first stitch and then you make your decrease stitch. And you can see how it's starting to close. So now, again, you're just going to repeat that pattern one single crochet into the first stitch and then make your decrease stitch all the way around back to the yarn marker. This is how my work looks so far and I'm just going to keep repeating what I've been doing until I'm almost closed. I'm going to make one single crochet into the first stitch and then make my decrease stitch and then just keep repeating that till I'm almost closed and then I'm going to show you how to slip stitch it. Closed. Now we're almost closed you can go ahead and take your yarn marker out and we're just going to slip stitch it closed and what you're going to do is you're going to skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to slip stitch closed, skip a stitch, yarn over, and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. And you're just going to keep doing that all the way around until it's completely closed. And this should be the last one. And then I'm going to finish off. Just yarn over. And then pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Just take your tapestry needle and put it onto the loose yarn end. And then you take your tapestry needle, go right in where you tied your knot, and come out anywhere on the leg. And then just cut the loose yarn end. And then you have the larger leg, if that's what you want. Then you're going to need four of the large legs to sew on. If you're making the larger chest for your bulldog, then it's going to be harder you're not going to be able to probably get through the full thickness of both legs and the chest. So I'm going to show you the alternate way that you can sew on your legs if you don't like that method. And you're just going to line up the leg how you want it on the body. And just um, once you have it lined up, and this is how I have mine lined up on the side. Make sure that your paw is facing front, the front way. Then you're just going to go right into the center. And I'm going about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight stitches down and right directly into the center of the leg. And I'm going into the body. And then I'm coming out directly under. So I went into the body and then out to the side. And you want to leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot and burying into your work. Then you're going to go back into the body and then back into the leg and come out close to where you went in. <clears throat> And 
then you're just going to tie a knot. And you can see that your leg will still move up and down, which is what you want. So go ahead and finish sewing. You're going to need a couple more, and you're going to come out this way, and then also come out on the other way. And then always sew around the size of, I would say, probably about a quarter, but don't go out to the edges. That way your foot will still be able to go up and down. Another trick that you can use is to take your tapestry needle and go through where you want to go on the one leg, go through the leg, and then go in with your tapestry needle where you want to go in on the body, and then just go through one at a time, then come out where you want to come out on the body, and go in on the other leg, and come out, and then go through that way, and then once you come back out on the other side, then you'll pull everything together and tie a knot. And now his legs are sewn on, and you can see how his legs look. And what I like about his legs is they go up and down. For the tail, we're going to start with a magic circle. Go ahead and get the color yarn that you want for your tail, and then you're just going to drape it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize, and then wrap it around your two middle fingers twice, and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're going to take your crochet hook, go under those two loops around the middle finger, and then you're going to yarn over and bring up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. And then you're going to make six single crochet into the magic circle. And then just take your forefinger and your thumb, hold the base of the six single crochet, and you have the two loops on the other opposite side. You're going to pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. And then take your loose yarn end and pull on that. Now you're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around. So you're going to go into that first stitch. You're going to bring up a loop. Two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. You're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12. And then come back. And this is where, if you have an opening in the center, you could turn it over and pull on that loose yarn in to close it up. Then take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off. Now you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for a total of eight rounds or however large you want your tail to be. For mine, I just made it eight rounds and then come back. After you finished eight rounds of one single crochet into every stitch, then you could take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to finish off. You're just going to yarn over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop. Bring enough yarn to sew the tail onto the dog. Then take your tail and the tapestry needle and put it on the long end that you left for sewing. Then you're just going to place your tail where you want to have it on your dog and then sew it on with your tapestry needle.
For the paws, I'm going to show you how to make the paw for your dog. You could choose whatever color you want. For Anna, the female bulldog, I used the pink color. And for Sad Sack, the boy dog, I'm going to use the honey color. So I'm going to show you with the honey color how to make the paw. The first thing you're going to do is make the magic circle and use your um, thumb to help stabilize the yarn and wrap it around your two middle fingers and then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then you're just going to go under the two loops around the middle fingers. You're going to bring up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make eight single crochet into the magic circle. Then you're going to take your forefinger and thumb and just hold the base of the eight single crochet. And then you'll see the two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. And of course, if it doesn't close, you let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Just close it gently, then take your loose yarn in and pull on that. Then all you're going to do is make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So you take your crochet hook go into the next stitch you're going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch and then you could pull on the loose yarn end on the back to close up the center of the magic circle then you're going to finish off you're just going to yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew it onto the paw And then you're going to need four of these. For the bottom portion of the paw, you're just going to take your yarn, you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then you're going to take your crochet hook and go right through the loop and hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Then you're going to make a chain of five. One, two, three, four, five. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So you're going to go into the second chain from the hook. You're going to bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through both for a single crochet. And then you're going to make a single crochet into every stitch back across. And then in the last stitch, you're going to make three single crochet into the last stitch. I'm going to bury my loose yarn end as I do it. I'm going behind the loose yarn end and I'm making three single crochet into the very last stitch and then I'm going to start working on the opposite side. So now I have the work turned upside down. This is where I just finished making single crochets and now I did three single crochets on the end and I'm on the opposite side and I'm going to make a single crochet into each stitch all the way to the other end. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn end. It's buried enough now. This is how my work looks so far. And then I'm going to make three single crochet into the last stitch.
Then you're going to make two single crochet into the next stitch. And then two single crochet into the next three stitches. This is how your work should look so far. And then you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. And then you're going to finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew onto your dog. And then you have the bottom portion of the paw. Then you're just going to sew with your tapestry needle, you're going to sew your paw onto the bottom of the foot. So you just go in and out. And just sew it in place. Make sure you sew it on really well so it doesn't fall off. You're not able to pull it off easily. And then you just go out. This loose yarn end is from the back of the magic circle. So you're going to take your yarn that you're sewing with and go out where that yarn end is. Then you're just going to tie a knot. Then you just take your loose yarn end and then you just go right back where you tied the knot and then you can go out anywhere on the foot and just cut the loose yarn end. Make sure you bury both of the loose yarn ends. And that's how you sew on the pieces. And then when you're done, it should look like this. So you should have the four top portions of the paw, and then you have the bottom pad of the paw. If you wanted to make the chest like um, chesty, then I increased to one single crochet into 14 stitches and then two single crochet into the 15th stitch. So you just keep increasing until you get to the one single crochet to 14 and then two single crochet. Then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch for three rounds. One, two, three. You can add your color at any point during the making of your chest, but I'm going to go ahead and change and add the color now. So I'm going to go ahead and take my crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. I have two loops on my hook, then I'm going to go ahead and grab my new color. And I'm just going to hook the new yarn and bring it through both loops. Then I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to tie a knot. And remember, you're keeping both colors. You're going to be crocheting with both colors for the body. Now I'm going to be carrying the white yarn, and I'm going to start crocheting. I'm going to go ahead and move my yarn marker up.
to where I left off. This is also going to be a decrease round. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into the next stitch over, go behind the white colored yarn, bring up a loop with my uh, new color. I have two loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through both for a single crochet. And then I'm going to make one single crochet into every stitch for 14 stitches. So one single crochet into 14 stitches. And I'm carrying my white yarn with me. I'm just going right behind the white yarn. So that's five. Twelve and fourteen. After I make one single crochet into fourteen stitches, I'm going to make my decrease stitch. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, go behind the white yarn, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch, go behind the white yarn, bring up a loop, three loops on my hook, I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through all three for decrease stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Actually, that's how you're going to do the decrease, but you're also going to change colors. So I'm going to show you how to change colors, but still do the decrease stitch. So now I'm going to change colors. I'm going to move the honey colored yarn to the back and pick up the white yarn. And you could do this at any point whatever design that you're making for your dog. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, go behind the honey colored yarn, pick up the white colored yarn. Now I have one loop of the white yarn and one loop of the honey colored yarn. Yarn over and go through both loops for a single crochet. And then I'm going to make 14 stitches, one single crochet into 14 stitches. And then I'm going to make my decrease stitch. So go ahead and continue your decrease rounds, and you can change colors wherever you want. Then you're going to make one single crochet into every stitch around for two rounds, and then come back. Then we're going to do another decrease round. So we did one single crochet in 14 stitches and then a decrease on the previous decrease round. Now on this decrease round we're going to make it 13. So you're going to go into the next stitch and make a single crochet and you're going to make a single crochet for the next 13 stitches. So I finished one single crochet into 13 stitches, and then I'm going to make my decrease stitch. And 
and then I'm going to repeat the pattern and then change colors. So I'm going to show you how I change colors. So that's one, two, and then I want to change colors at this point. So I'm going to move this yarn to the back, pick up my white yarn, go into the next stitch, and then start over. So one single crochet into 13 stitches. Let's see where I did my last decrease. So here is my last decrease. So I did one, two, three, four, five, Was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. And then my decrease stitch. And that's how you start making the chest a little bit. It starts out large and then it starts to gradually get smaller. So I went from 14 decreases for the decrease round and then I did two rows of just one single crochet in every stitch and now I'm doing the one in 13 stitches, one single crochet in the 13 stitches and then my decrease stitch. Now go ahead and finish two rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. So after every decrease round, you're going to do two rounds of one single crochet into every stitch. So this is how your work should look, and you can see how it's gradually getting smaller on the opening because of your decrease rounds. So your decrease rounds is um, decreasing the amount of stitches in your round. So for this decrease round, we're going to do 11. So we did 14 and then we did 13 and then now we're going to do, let's see, how many, we did 14 and then we did 13 so now we're going to do 12. So that's how you're going to do it. You're just going to keep getting smaller and smaller. So now it's going to be one single crochet into 12 stitches and then the next decrease round would be 11. So there's one, one single crochet into two stitches, three, four, So that's one single crochet into 12 stitches. Now I'm going to make my decrease stitch. So I'm going to the next stitch, bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, and then pull the yarn through all three, and then repeat that pattern all the way around. So here you can see how you would keep decreasing and then doing your one single crochet into every stitch until you get down to the size that you want for the rest of the body. And then you would just make rounds of one single crochet into every stitch and then close it the same way that you did for the regular sized body. So for mine, I made 36 rounds total if you wanted to make yours the same size as mine. To make the teeth for your bulldog instead of the tongue, you're just going to take your white yarn and you're going to loop it over on itself then put your crochet hook right through the loop and hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb and then just yarn over and turn the hook upside down and go through that loop for a slip knot. Then make a chain of four. One, two, three, 
four. After your chain of four, you're going to make a slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So you take your crochet hook, go into the second chain from the hook, you're going to yarn over, and then just pull the yarn through both loops on your hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch, so bring up a loop, two loops on the hook, yarn over and go through both for a single crochet, and then you're going to do a single crochet into that last stitch. And then you're going to finish off, so you just yarn over and pull enough yarn through for sewing. And then you're going to need two of these to sew on to the dog. Then, here, Chesty is just showing you what the teeth look like on him. You just take your tapestry needle with the white yarn, and then you just sew the teeth in place. And here you can see where I sewed one of the teeth on this side. And then you just embroider a stitch a couple of times for the front teeth, and then put the other triangular fang on the other side. And that's how I sewed the teeth on to Chesty and um, Gunny.